that was the last supplementary of question two. We move on to question three. It was put to you by the Honorable Malema. Honorable members, Honorable Speaker, following the release of the Public Protector's report into allegations against the President, there has been much interest in the country about the funding and the operation of what I would call the CR17 campaign. As I have already indicated, the public protector's report, as I indicated already, the public protector's report is currently under judicial review and the courts, our independent courts, will make a determination in this regard. And some people have used this opportunity quite correctly, in my view, to debate the issue of the funding of, of political funding. And this is an important debate that needs to ensue in our country. I have also initiated myself a discussion within the political party that I need. I initiated that discussion at our last National Executive Committee and when I reported to the National Executive, I said, this whole matter actually has put forward a question that we now need to address as a political party. But now others have a more sinister agenda, using leaked information selectively to undermine the positive changes that have been brought about in our country since the 54th National Conference. Now, I need to say the CR17 campaign was a legitimate, forward-looking, and necessary effort to promote the renewal of the governing party and broader society, and it was undertaken under difficult conditions. In its funding and its activities, there was no wrongdoing. Let me repeat. No wrongdoing, no criminality, and no abuse of public funds or resources. It is important that we should note that. Those who contributed to the campaign, whether as organizers, as volunteers, as members of the ANC, as service providers, or indeed as donors, of one sort or another, including myself, did so out of a genuine concern for the future of our country. If there were members of the executive who were part of the campaign who were involved in fundraising, they did so as individual party members, exercising their democratic and constitutional right. And in this regard, let us be clear, they owe no apology for what they did. <laughs> now, for what they did, that is a matter between themselves and their party, as it is a matter between myself as president of the African National Congress and my party. And it is for that reason that I have initiated that discussion in the African National Congress. Now, as things currently stand, there are no rules or regulations in place for the disclosure of donations for internal party leadership contests. I am not aware of them. Now, this matter, let me be clear, this matter is now before our courts. It is a matter that is going to be discussed by our courts, the extent to which declarations or disclosures could have needed to be made for internal party political campaigning. Now, we will wait for the determination of the court in that regard, and once the court has declared, we will then be able to take the matter forward. I am that open enough to say, I want the court 
to make a determination on this matter, nor is there a provision for disclosure of such information in the Executive Ethics Code or in the Code of Ethical Conduct and Disclosure of Members' Interests for Assembly and Permanent Council Members. I am sure that Honorable Malema would agree that it would be unreasonable and potentially prejudicial to expect the disclosure of such information until such time that all candidates and all parties are held to the same requirements of disclosure and transparency. Now, now honorable members, honorable speaker, in this regard, you know, the Political Funding Act, which I signed into law earlier this year, does regulate public and private funding of political parties and requires disclosure of donations accepted. Now, while this act does not extend to the funding of internal party leadership contests, this is perhaps the appropriate time for this House to consider whether it is necessary and desirable for funding of internal party context, co contests to be disclosed and regulated. This is the time, because it is this House that must come up with whatever solutions. Do we want, do we want internal party political contests from the governing party right through to even the smallest party that is represented here? that they are internal contests, because let's take it, let's accept it. In political parties, there are contestations for leadership. Honorable Malema may be contested by another member in the party, and when they contest, yes. No, no, but it can happen. I'm not wishing that it should happen, but it can happen. But it can happen if, let, let's put it this way, let's put it this way. Honorable Shibambo is Honorable Malema's deputy. Now, heaven forbid one day it happens that Honorable Shibambo decides that he actually wants to contest. He wants to contest the position of CIC. And he says, I am tired of being a deputy. I want to contest. And the same thing may happen to Honorable Maimani. It may happen to even myself. So when that happens, when that happens, you then want to, say, get the resources so that you can, you can topple uh, the, to the person at the head. Now, now, now the proposal the question I would pose is, do we want, this House must discuss it, do we want those contests that we could get engaged in to be regulated so that there is disclosure of what Honorable Shibambo will raise as he contests the CIC? Speaker, speaker. I, honorable, I, honorable Shibambo. Like, Are you on a point of order? On a point of order. I, th I think the most appropriate example you must use is Honorable D.D. contesting <laughs> him. Because that is most likely. Not this one is a... Thank you, sir. Was still stable. I'm sure he's hearing you, Yeah, but that is not stable. a point of order. <laughs> Please proceed, Mr. President. Well, maybe, maybe to make you feel better, to make you feel better, do we want when Honorable... Mabuza contests me as president of the ANC that the resources that he might raise to be regulated and to be regulated by an act of parliament. All that. that is the question we have to raise, that we have to discuss amongst ourselves. So this is, I would therefore like to suggest that parliament take, this parliament take responsibility for ensuring that the same standards 
of accountability and transparency are applied to all leaders, are applied across the board, if that is what we want to do. I thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Mr. President. The Honorable Malema. Thank you very much, uh, President. Just quickly to remind your members that in the VBS scandal, 99,8% of people implicated in that story are ANC members. So they must stop being chatterer and saying other things here. Now, President, Order members. you were elected on a ticket of transparency. And uh, you were elected on the ticket of anti-corruption as a man who's not scared to uh, open up to society and the country and say these are the activities we're involved in. So now, why do you have a problem in disclosing the names of people who have made contribution to you? Even if you were doing that for political party papers or contest in the party, you were the deputy president, you are the president, and you can't take leave from yourself. You can't say, today I'm on leave. I'm not a state deputy president, I'm a party deputy president. At all material times, you are the leader of our country. And the sooner you come to the reality that not everybody is a president of South Africa, and stop comparing yourself with other candidates. We do not have interest on them, they have not won. You are the president, and you shall be held with high standards because you are the president. You must never be shocked when we don't ask similar questions to, uh, to nobodies, because you are the number one citizen who occupies the highest office. And therefore, to compare yourself with nobodies, you are reducing not only yourself, but the office you are occupying. But this one, the last one, you'll answer me outside. How many of my members did you give money? <laughs> the, the Honorable the President. <laughs> order members, order. <laughs> order. Okay. Mr. Oh, President. Honorable Speaker, uh, <clears throat> let, let me start off. Let me start off with the first question and say that yes, indeed, transparency is absolutely necessary, and I have no difficulty or problem with the issue of transparency. The, the act that the, my lawyers took in asking the court to seal some of those documents is because the documents that were then, particularly the bank statements that were then made available uh, to the public protector, were of a number of accounts emanating from as early as 2014, when there was no, say, CR17 campaign. And what got to us was just the confidentiality of the information of a number of people. You know, bank accounts are very sort of sensitive type of documents where all of us, all of us in our bank accounts, we transact with whoever and so forth. And that is quite private and all that. Now, they went as early as 2014 and during a period where there was no campaign and that is what our lawyers felt needed yes, to be sealed. Now, in the course of all that, it then encompasses everything. Now, we are going to do a review of all that, and I would like Honorable Malema to keep an eye on the issue of transparency. And, uh, and of course, you're absolutely right. As President of the Republic, yes, I know I'll be held to a much higher standard. You're absolutely right. And uh, I would say that you know, you say I should not see myself as being equal to everybody. I am equal to everybody, but I am held to a much higher standard. And I accept that. Let us allow this period of evaluating this whole process through the courts, and thereafter, 
I will be able to take a view and indeed see how best we handle this situation. Because indeed, I do want to uphold the principle of being transparent, of being straight and being honest, indeed, even on this very difficult matter. Now, you want to know how many members of your EFF we gave money to. Now, let me say, let me say, the EFF put me in a very embarrassing position uh, because in the end, uh, those members have now been shifted aside. Now, these two colleagues, and I see them as colleagues, by the way, they served in the NCOP, and they were my most vociferous opponents and critics in the NCOP. And when, as members of parliament, right across the board, when we discuss, there is a point where there is the question of humanity, where there is humanity, where we interact with each other beyond even party lines and see ourselves as human beings. When these two members had great difficulties, which they needed to, the, which they articulated, we felt that help was needed and they were given help. The help was not connected to anything as I have done with other, a number of other members as well. So it was out of a deep generosity, not on your side, admittedly. So that's what it is. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Mr.